So I thought that I would start over on this side of the yard for a change. <clears throat> this is not the, the yard that I, I usually show too much. I got a little follower here. He's been walking just a little bit be before me all the way down. All the way down this. This is the back of our property here. So this yard, I'll just go to the proper thing. Here we go. So this yard is our um, the yard on the south side of our house. I don't really show this very often because there's not really a whole lot to show, but this is a south facing yard. Remember, back at this spring when we had that really bad snowstorm and I was out shaking off all these hedges here. Well, this here is a Saskatoon tree and it was completely on the ground, frozen to the ground from, we had a storm of rain and snow and sleet and snow and it froze. And I came and I shook it out, but it never really did stand back up again. It's still leaning an awful lot. It bloomed and it's it's setting it's it's gonna have Saskatoons on it. It's setting fruit, but it's really leaning over. And I tried to stake it up on this, but it's it's not having it. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I'm afraid I might have to cut it back. But I'm gonna let it do its fruit thing. I actually never get these Saskatoons. The birds eat them all before I I get any. So and a beautiful lilac bush. I've had some of these in the house all week. They're beautiful and they smell so gorgeous. So yeah, this is the side of the south side. Now, I have a couple of pieces of rhubarb here, here and here. I'm going to cut that. This is where all the rhubarb used to be. And when we moved here, this was a whole rhubarb bed. And I thought I had moved it all, but obviously I didn't get two pieces. So I've got rhubarb here and I've got rhubarb on the other side of the house. So I've been working here. We used to have a plum tree here and it was diseased. So we took it down and last year I just threw a bunch of seeds in here and a lot of them were perennial dianthus but I have bought um, a giant fleece flower and I planted it here right here and I hope it's going to do something anyway it's supposed to get eight feet tall if it survives and it should cover this whole area. So I'm taking the dianthus out and moving them to other parts of the, the yard. And I just made this new bed here. Some of the dianthus I've moved here. Everything, see this is, nothing much wants to grow here because it's so hot. You can see how hot it is. And I would usually water in the morning, but we're expecting storms soon. Starting to cloud up already. Oh, and I didn't show you what else I planted. I've planted a few trees too. This is a new tree that I just planted. It's a um, paper birch. Very small. I hope it survives. Planted that a couple of years ago. You back at your auntie? These robins are hilarious. And this is another new plant. This is um, a Pascapoo poplar. It doesn't shed like a regular poplar and it doesn't get tall. It only gets about eight feet tall and it branches out. So that's sort of why I put it here. So now we're at the front of the house. And 
this whole bed here, I have to, I'm taking it all out and I'm just, we're just gonna rock it in. Nothing grows here very well. And next you can see we had to silicone behind our steps. They've moved away and the water was getting in there. So hubby's been working on that. This is the front of my house. Got my pots filled up with petunias. And I put some, uh, what did I put inside? I can't remember. This is now west facing and this gets really hot here. This is the last of my tulips, aren't they beautiful? There usually long finished by now and some irises that are just ready to pop open once we get that rain they'll just pop some chives garlic chives this is my little snowball snowball bush that i planted oh about three weeks ago it's growing doing very well and i did put the clematis here there's also, um, oh, I can't remember what those things are called. There's two plants here growing. We'll see. So now we'll go around to the other side. This is where I took out all those irises in that one video. I'm gonna put a peony in there, but I'm gonna get the peony from um, my old house in the city where our son bought our house when we moved out here and he doesn't want the peony so I'm gonna put it get it and put it here these are delphinians these big things here and these are lilies red lilies day lilies and another little lilac bush that I pulled out from underneath the hedge you can see the difference between this iris and those ones behind and I really thought I had two of them I do have two of them and um, these are the big black irises they are so beautiful I'll be sure and show you them there's a rose bush some lilies birds have been busy this is echinacea here so let's go through my, my lettuces up that I planted along here. And I got three scrubby tomatoes in here. And believe me, they are scrubby. Well, you see. I haven't had a chance to do much weeding in here, so don't mind the weeds. These are those beautiful lilies I can't wait to show them to you they are gorgeous even the foliage is beautiful so a few things are blooming here's a little blue columbine so pretty gorgeous and here's the little rose that I put in it's struggling a little bit, but I think it'll be okay. Another tulip. No, wouldn't you know I have to get the hiccups now. Nothing blooming here yet, but things are growing. These little Johnny jump ups, they're everywhere. Let's just seed them. And of course the dandelions are doing very well, don't you know? Oh, here's some. Just about to bloom, the irises. There's quite a nice patch here. So this will be a nice pretty blue area. Yeah, everything is really dry. I didn't water this morning because I knew that we were gonna have, we're supposed to have rain for the next three days. Here's another columbine. 
This one is sort of a rusty red with a yellow center. They're just starting. They're not as open as the other ones are. And look at these little Johnny jump ups. I'll be taking these out. I'll be pulling them out. They just grow wild. There's something that's blooming in there. And I have another tomato here. And I have one way over there. And those delphinians are starting to get really tall. I don't see any flower heads on them yet, but there will be. They bloom more into July. And below, beyond this, I have sweet peas starting. I have to get in here and start giving them some training. This is where I put the popcorn. But I really don't see anything that looks like popcorn in here. This is tomorrow's job. Um, I'm going to be harvesting all of this and making some jam or marmalade. So the fruit is doing good, looking great. I have a feeling that I'm going to have some fruit this year. This is all raspberries. These are black raspberries. Wyoming black. These are red. And that's a currant bush in the middle. And here's my vegetable garden. I have beans up. I have kale. More beans. Um, looks like beets are through. Here, here's some beets along here. I don't see any carrots. What did I have? Two rows of beets, two rows of carrots, and two rows of beans. Yeah, so I have two rows of beets. I can see the beets, but I don't see the carrots. And those are broccoli there, and there's Swiss chard planted along here, and it is starting to come through just a little bit. No. This isn't Swiss chard. I think this is um, rutabaga in here. Swiss chard is over there. Look at these dandelions. I have another tomato here. And these are the purple pole beans that I put up. And I'm gonna train them to climb on this trellis. And on, on the, the other side, those are the morning glories and they're going to go up on the outside and there's some more tomatoes here I've re this is one that I bought to replace the one that didn't look so hot and on this side I planted Chinese noodle beans and they didn't I don't think they've done anything I don't see any it was an old packet of seeds so Perhaps they're not going to do anything. And then again, there's morning glories on the other side and weeds as well. <laughs> Some lettuce growing along, along there. Hey, Robin. So, um, one video, this was just coming through the ground and I said it was... Um, what did I say it was? A cucumber? It's a sunflower, I think. But I do have a cucumber there, and I have a couple here. So, those beans are still coming through. Those are really doing good over there. So I transplanted this. This is um, mock orange. That was in that bed at the other side that I'm emptying out. That was in there, so I put this here. And there's a new tree here. This is another one of those Pascapoo poplars. And it looks like it's doing pretty good. And then over there, planted another um, paper birch over there. 
The strawberry bed is pathetic, isn't it? I need to get some straw and or mulch or something for this bed. It's just, it's full of weeds. I don't really think it's very good soil either. And here's my tea bed. This is mint. This is um, bee balm here in the middle. This is a peppermint and that is a chocolate mint. Most of my mint didn't come back. Very sporadic, because this was just full of mint before. And of course I have my two or three. Ouch, mosquito just bit me. Um, tulips that shouldn't be here, but I didn't have the heart to pull them out. So my husband's been trimming the hedge. This is a major job for him. It takes so long, but it does look good when it's done. So you can see how far he's taking it down. Maybe I can go over here and see better. Yeah, he's bringing it down at least two feet or so. This part's done. And that part's yet to do on all the way around. And he's also moving them in, taking off the sides and top on both sides of the hedge. So that's what's going on in my yard. And I'm, I'm only going to be having a couple more weeks to do this. Come on, Backbird. Um, I have an appointment for a consult with the surgeon oncologist who will be doing my surgery and that's on July the 4th. So after that, the surgery will be after that. So I'm just trying to get ahead of things in the yard on days that I can. But like I said, uh, now we're supposed to have, <laughs> we're supposed to have three or four days of rain. Today, this afternoon and tonight is supposed to be thunderstorms. But um, I think we could use the rain. These robins just follow me around all day long. So I'm gonna go in the house now and I'm going to do some stitching. So yesterday I was on Facebook and I was just, you know, catching up on posts and things like that. And I come across an ad, an advertisement from The Gift of Stitchery, which is an online cross stitch magazine. And they were offering 11 of their back issues of Christmas magazines uh, for $7.99. So um, I decided to jump for it. <laughs> I'm always looking for Christmas things for smalls, for making ornaments to give on, to put on gifts and things like that. I always like to make a, an ornament to go with it. So this is what I'm doing right now. I'm taking a break from my red work and I'm just working on this little one here. And this is from one of the issues. This is, he's gonna have skates on this, um, Reindeer is going to have skates and then he'll have things hanging from his his antlers and then a fluffy tassel on his um, scarf and then a, a big smile also. It, it's a very fast stitch. I've, I started this this morning and um, it's been a real 
fast, cute little project. And I'll be giving this to a little boy for his Christmas. And I'll put the year on it because when I give it to children, um, if I make an ornament such as this for a child, I like to put the year on. And if I give them one every year, you know, they can see back when they were small, once they're older, they can look back when they're small and see, oh yeah, I got that in 2020. Wow, that was a long time ago. <laughs> so anyway, this is one of the ones that I'm doing. And then I printed off another one. Unfortunately, I don't have a, um, a picture of it, but it's a baby's first Christmas. And I have two, uh, we have two newborn babies coming up in October in our family. Um, nieces and or actually one is a niece having great niece having a baby and one is a great nephew so I'm going to make two of those too so I'll put a link to that um, magazine um, in the description below but it's um, the gift of stitchery and like I said it is an online cross stitch magazine and they have all kinds of things it's not just all Christmas stuff but what they're offering is uh, 11 issues back issues of Christmas magazines for $7.99 which and that's $7.99 US but that's still a good deal because these um, cross stitch magazines tend to run they, they, they can be pretty expensive so that's what I'm that's what I'm working on today I have been I don't know if I can get it out of here without upsetting the apple cart I've got it in here yeah, I can. I have been stitching on my red work piece here. And really, I am... Um, I'm not all that far from finishing. This is... This is right at the edge here. There's a little bit of a border. Maybe... Um, ten, ten stitches... A border around and that's it the bottom there's a little bit more to go but uh, yeah I'm getting there I want to get this finished I have a frame for it so I want to get it finished and get it up on the wall I love this piece it's been such a great stitch and a lot of it is just like um, I don't know if you can see it if I can get it up close enough for you to see it but a lot of it is just a single running stitch. There's a lot of that in here. This whole tree now is all going to be this kind of thing. And that's all done just with one, one thread. So it's on Ada, 14 count Ada. I wished it had been on something else, but it's all right. It was a kit. I bought this um, quite a while ago. And I don't know if I have to tell you. Yeah, here we go. This is the kit. I bought it from, um, I don't know where I bought this from. Online somewhere. So that's what it's going to look like when it's done. I should take it out of there. Okay. It's a Russian sampler. Everything comes with it. It's variegated yarn. So, um, you know, you don't. Never, what I like about it is you never have to change yarn or thread. You just, you just, whatever you pull is what you get. See, all of these stitches, that's all single, single thread. And a lot of this is... There's the border that I'm missing still. That's all single thread. So I'm not, I'm just right. I'm doing this tree now. So as you can see, I've already started. This border here is this border here. So I'm right at the edge on this side. And I'm pretty much on the, no, I guess I'm wrong. This border is this border. I'm looking at it backwards. Yeah, so I'm getting there, but I thought I would just take a little break. It seems as I, I wanted to try one of the ornaments in that uh, the Gift of Stitchery 
thing that I bought. And you know, um, there's lots of really cute little ornaments in there. I'm going to be doing lots of smalls out of there. There's there's hundreds. When you get 11 issues, and there's probably 30 or well 30 or 40 pages per issue, so you can imagine there's there's a lot of content in there. So I'm going to have fun doing that. But this this one kind of caught my eye. He's going to have skates. Yeah, I think that's so sweet. So I'm going to finish this one. I'll show it to you when I'm all done. But I'm just going to sit here in my beautiful little working space and stitch away till this is done. And then I think I'll make myself some tea. Thanks for coming along today. Tomorrow is going to be um, rhubarb marmalade day and I'll record some of that. Look at the tan I've got already from being outside in the garden. I'm I'm so white I'm like parchment paper. This is crazy. I never tan but it's been really hot. Okay I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.